uh, probably about 150,000. 150. How many years did it take you to get it to 150? Um, probably about uh, seven or eight. Well, that's enough driving right there, Steve. I thought you were going to say like 20. No, no, not at all. We're just a little rougher on the farms, chasing cattle and, you know, rounding up livestock and, you know, using our vehicles for stuff they're probably not intended to, to be used for. Sure. <laughs> we'll keep your secret safe here, Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no worries there. Uh, will you ever consider uh, turning some of your land into a solar farm? I don't have any intentions of turning my, any of my farmland into solar, no, sir. Was uh, solar farm any of uh, the topic of discussion at the comprehensive plan meeting earlier this week? We had Jenny Brockman and Luke Siegfried on, on Monday to talk about the meeting you had earlier this week. No, um, they didn't discuss a whole lot about the solar farms. Um, basically, this meeting, we, we did a, a SWOT analysis to determine the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities of Jefferson County. And what did you learn? Um, the strengths, well, how we did this, we divided it up in groups, and we wrote down the strengths, and everybody kind of voted on uh, the, the certain strengths, the, the most important strengths of the county, along with the weaknesses and then opportunities. Um, some of the some of the biggest strengths, and it's been it's been pretty much straight across the board with every every time we've done a SWOT analysis, we've done one with we've done one with the county commission and this planning commission. One of the biggest strengths is our natural resources that we have we have the shando river and the potomac uh and also we have a lot of historical uh, uh towns like as uh, shepherdstown and harpers ferry um trails we have biking trails hiking trails uh that everybody feels like that was the one of the biggest strengths that jefferson county has to offer what about the weaknesses steve weaknesses um w one of the things i've heard is tr the transportation uh, people feel like we need better, uh, better roads here, um, and affordable housing. Affordable housing has, has came up a, a few times. How about the natural gas pipeline that never came through? That is, uh, that was one that came up in one of the SWOT analysis that we do need uh, utilities to the rest of the county. Um, however, as you know, the natural gas line. It stops out at the around the Rockwell area. It'd be really nice to get that line over to the Burr Industrial Park. I know those uh, uh, owners over there would love to have it in the park, and then eventually try to get it to town. I mean, the um, my understanding uh, to run a natural uh, gas line is about a million dollars a mile. So, I think the only reason, or only 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 how we can get a, a pipeline across the county is to have another end user on the other side of town, a big user to to uh, pay for it, but. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Going back to water, you mentioned Shenandoah and the Potomac. Uh, can you pull from, can, can a municipality pull from the Shenandoah like you can from the Potomac? Uh, yes, sir. Um, CTUB, um, Charles County Utility Board, they pull from the Shenandoah. Uh, Harpers Ferry pulls from the Shenandoah. No, no, sorry, excuse me. Harpers Ferry pulls from the Potomac. Yeah. Shepherdstown pulls from the Potomac. Um, we do have a private utility uh, in the county. They're actually well injected. So, so three out of the four utilities pull from the river. Okay. What about the rest of the county? Uh, and I'm thinking about the have to get from water. Uh, the water I've heard has been kind of uh, unevenly distributed through the uh, through Jefferson County. Has that proved to be an impediment at all in your growth? I, I believe it is. You know, you, I think last time I was on the show, I was comparing Jefferson County to Berkeley County and how, how Berkeley County ran public water and sewer in a lot of rural areas. Um, Jefferson County has not done that. We have a system in obviously Shepherdstown, Harpers Ferry, and then C-Tub, and then a private system here. Um, they have not ran uh, in the more rural areas of the county. That's why you see most most of our growth in and around the cities. Actually, the same thing as Berkeley County. Approximately uh, only about 50% uh, of the residents in Berkeley County are on public water. The rest are somewhere mm -hmm. else. Yeah, good. Steve, yeah. What, what else came out of the comprehensive plan meeting? Um, th basically, um, that was, there was just, this SWOT analysis took most of the evening. Uh, we did we did hear from a few folks. Uh, w one very interesting thing, a gentleman mentioned that uh, when he he moved here, 
Um, we had 47 dairy farms, and now we're down to three. Um, a lot of folks talked about the agricultural aspect of Jefferson County, and at the end of the day, you know, agriculture is, is really tough here because we don't have uh, the next generations that doesn't seem like they're as interested in running at the farm. Um, I know a farmer once told me, he said, yeah, we save up our money. We send our children to uh, college. They come, they come back. They know how to read a spreadsheet and they want to, they sit down to run the family farm. And they're like, why did I make this decision? Now that I know how to understand this spreadsheet. Uh, I don't know that this was probably the best business choice for me to take. <laughs> so, uh -huh. you know, I mean, it, it is tough. It is tough. And, um, uh, farming is a, is certainly is a, it's, it's, it's a tough business and, you know, you're certainly, uh, you know, you have to rely on mother nature. And right now we're, we're experiencing uh, very low rainfall. Uh, there's a lot of crops in the ground. We have corn, soybeans planted, and, and uh, there's a lot of farmers getting ready to, to start doing some rain dances here to get the rain come on to, to take this crop and get it growing. There's uh, getting feedback, Steve, including at your place, that there's immediate danger. I, I don't say immediate yet, as far as rain. I, I won't put that out there, but I, we need we need some rain uh, here soon. I saw Monday there was a sixty percent chance of rain in the forecast, but that's it. That's over the next ten days. That's the only day I see where there's any chance of rain. And lately, yeah. on the days when they've said there's a chance of rain, we didn't get it anyway. Very scattered, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been an yeah, issue. Exactly right, uh, Steve. Uh, there recently an ordinance was passed by the Jefferson County Commission dealing with attendance at live performances, minors attending live performances that uh, may depict or simulate lewd behavior. Can you tell me more about this ordinance and uh, what was the genesis of it? Yes, uh, the ordinance was exactly as you said. It's, uh, it was barring minors from attending adult live performances. Um, the, um, the ordinance did pass three to two. Um, I was not one of the ones that voted in favor of this ordinance. For the primary reason I did not vote in favor of this ordinance, I feel like this ordinance needed to go to a public hearing. Um, we need, I feel like we needed to give the citizens an, an opportunity to make public comment. Um, the ordinance was presented at our Thursday meeting last week. Uh, typically, um, and that's a day meeting, typically our public hearings are always done on they take place on the third Thursday of the month, which is an evening meeting. And I just felt like uh, this ordinance needed to go before the public to get some more feedback. Um, I did have some legality uh, questions, more questions with this ordinance uh, as it relates to uh, West Virginia Code 7-1-4. Um, but it, it did pass. Um, again, it, like I said, it, passed, it did pass three to two. And uh, who joined you in voting against it, Steve? Uh, Commissioner Tab. Commissioner Tab. All right. Uh, and was there discussion about this ordinance for quite some time that led to this vote, or did this just kind of come up because this is the way culture has gone lately? No, we didn't have any discussion prior to. Um, the commissioners uh, have to – we asked the all the commissioners to present their agenda items roughly a week before the meeting. Um so this, this uh, agenda item was put on the uh, our agenda, requested to be on our agenda. So it, really, we didn't have any discussion prior to it going out. Um, this just showed up, kind of showed up in our agenda, but to, to discuss at last Thursday's meeting. And what will the consequences of this ordinance mean for performers or for those who are in violation of the ordinance, whether it be a minor attending? or uh, somebody who is perhaps hosting this or financially backing uh, an, inc uh, a, a, an event where an incident occurs? Well, that's, that's sort of some of the legality, uh, legal questions that I have uh, with this ordinance. Uh, it does uh, leave some parts of it up to interpretation. Um, there's a, there, it's, it says that um, you cannot have any type of lewd behavior. Well, Lou behavior in my eyes might be different than yours and Bill's or, or vice versa. So it's tough to police that. I think it's too vague uh, for, that, for that matter. And um, I, I, think it's, I think it needed a little bit more work if, and, and I, 
feel that we're going to be challenged on this. I know the ACLU has mentioned that uh, they may indeed mount a challenge on this. When I first heard of this ordinance, Steve, I'll tell you, I have two thoughts, and they were complete opposite side thoughts on this. My first one was uh, this kind of reminded me a little bit of the Elvis Presley thing. Uh, I wasn't alive for it in the 50s, but I remember my mother telling me about it and then subsequently have seen uh, movies about it and such where Elvis, because he shook his hips uh, the way he did, uh, in in the South, that was considered lewd behavior, and there was a hysteria of about hosting Elvis and allowing him to do shows so much so that eventually on TV we only shot him from the waist up uh, at one point. Uh, my other thought on that was, you know, at a movie theater, there's a rating system that recommends, and in some cases prohibits, minors from attending certain movies. But there isn't such a, a rating system on live performances so, so maybe this is warranted. So I had, as I said, two complete opposite thoughts on the on this as I first uh, read about it. Did Did you have something similar to that, Steve? Well, I had I did have a citizen send me an email recommending that actually to to have a rating on live performances, so you could rate them just as you would the movie. So it could be G P G P G I guess P G P G thirteen and R. Mm -hmm. um, it would it would make sense. Um, that might be another alternative. And then people would know exactly uh, if they were going to a live performance, what type of behavior they could expect. Bill? Yeah, uh, Steve, uh, I was struck with two things when I heard about the ordinance. Being a, uh, a prior uh, county commissioner, uh, I was struck with the fact that there is so little open debate. Uh, it's my understanding that a lot was done in the executive session. I, for one, believe that except for an individual personnel, there should never be an executive session, but everybody tends to overuse it. Uh, and this was a perfect example. I would be curious to see what the discussion was behind executive session, but we'll never know because the rules of executive session. So, one, the lack of transparency, and I don't want to pick on you because I know Berkeley County, uh, I think, invokes executive session a lot more than they should, uh, but that was number one. Let me uh, ask you to respond to that, and then I have a second point. Yes, it's, it's obviously I can't t tell you what we discussed in executive session, but I can tell you we were and we did have several matters to discuss in executive session, legal matters. Um, so we were in there a, a, a good a good long time, um, but we were discussing many many items that um, we needed to discuss with our attorney. Yeah, that's that's not the point I'm making. I'm the fact that uh -huh. the point I'm making is that you included something like this within executive session. Not that executive session with the attorney is not appropriate, but we use executive session as kind of a catch-all to avoid uh, uh, open open transparency. Uh, and so, yeah, I legit, executive sessions are appropriate for certain things, but I don't think it's it's appropriate for everything. Okay. I, I don't I don't necessarily disagree with you on that. Okay. Um, you know, as far as, you know, employment, employment issues and, and, and um, you know, obviously we have a couple various lawsuits that we're in with the employees and stuff like that, that we have to discuss uh, with our attorney. But there's some things that probably um, should or shouldn't be as well. I agree. Yeah. And I again, I think uh, you're not the only one that does this. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's it's an awfully easy thing uh, to go into executive session and discuss a whole range of issues. And I think that's a real mistake. Uh, my, my other point is, uh, as again, coming from a uh, prior county commissioner, uh, it appears that Jefferson County is jumping into the cultural warfare more than what my experience with other county commissions have been. Uh, generally, the, the limit of uh, uh, this involvement is that you cannot build a, a strip club within so many feet of a, of, a, uh, of a high school or some other sort of public arena. But you folks are taking it one step farther. And yet, by your definition, there are so many unknowns that's just invited a legal challenge. Uh, one of our listeners said, well, it's just common sense. I, I don't know what is common sense now uh, because your common view of common sense is different than my view of common sense. Uh, I guess I assume that you folks realize it was going to be a 
an open door. Uh, public criticism, public lawsuit, everything else are uh, originating from this ordinance. Did you not? Uh, yes, sir. I, I sure did, and that's why I wanted I wanted more time. I wanted to give the citizens an opportunity to to make public comment. You know, I wanted to be transparent, and and I wanted I wanted to dig in this a little deeper about the legal aspects of this document. Yeah. Okay. Now, but. And then this comes back to the question I was talking about earlier. Why? What was the what was the perceived need of doing this so quick without public hearings, without a full vetting uh, from the from the public? Because uh, this this leads ones to believe that the county commission are an elitist role. Of we know what's right for everybody. We don't really want your opinion. Yeah. Um you know that's a good question, and that would be a that would be a question for uh, for the commissioner. She voted for it, um, but it's too I, late now. Well, yeah, it is. well we can still it interview this. I, I, yeah. I certainly didn't ask their yeah. opinion why they yeah. um, wanted to, to to push it through. I, uh, but it would be that would be a more suited question for them. I think. Yeah, you're right. The ordinance prohibits the allowing of minors to be in attendance at uh, performances that fit this description. Uh, those in violation could get a misdemeanor charge, a possible $500 fine up to 30 days in jail, and penalties could increase as uh, more infractions take place. Uh, so, Steve, uh, is there a committee that will be formed that will be put together to define what fits this description? Uh, who will be in charge of uh, finding out what shows qualify? Uh, I don't believe that was never discussed. Um, it, it, my... I, I'll just assume that who's who will be enforcing this certain certainly would be the sheriff's department, and and then they will make the determine that they they are then held to make the the uh, decision whether it was of, of the content of these shows I guess. Has, has the sheriff's input been uh, sought yet in regards to the enforcement of the ordinance, Steve? Uh, no, sir, not to my knowledge. Isn't that an awful slippery slope walking down? You, the county council, county commission. Uh, oh, keep, sets, keep in mind, Steve voted against it. I, I know, I know, but I, but this is a uh, uh, an opportunity to vet my my personal concern that it is a slippery slope. Uh, the county co uh, commission voted for something, then basically turned it over to the uniform service and said, "Hey, it's your problem." Uh, there is a long history of uh, of, of abuse by uniform personnel if it's not real it's certainly in the perception uh so this this to me opens a real can of worms i uh, yeah, i do agree and um again one of the one of the reasons i voted against it because i need i thought it needed more time we need and we need to open up for public comment as well to uh to address some of these issues that you brought up today has there been any public feedback that you've gotten to this point about this ordinance steve um, we've probably received all the commissioners in total, probably uh, 50 or so emails and um, from, from various, uh, um, residents. Are they fairly evenly divided or are they in one direction or the other? Uh, no, they're all, all against it. They're all, all, all against, over it. against yeah. the ordinance. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So the ordinance is there. Does that mean it is now law? It, it would have taken it. Yes. It would have taken place uh, or been, been law, the, I guess, the next business day. Yes, sir. Okay. So I assume then this will be driven by citizen complaint, maybe somebody at a show. Is that how it's going to work? Well, most of the time, uh, I, I, I can't imagine uh, us having we, – we're short, we're short on police officers as it is, so I can't imagine we're going to have a, a police officer at every live performance in Jefferson County. So obviously the policing – of, of this would be by citizens most like most likely making a, a complaint yes sir let me use an a an example uh and I've seen this over the years at a, a parade, a Fourth of July parade, or some parade. There's always one or two folks for costume effect, dress up as a uh, as a as a woman uh, with overblown in every description, uh, meant to for to evoke laugh laughter. This falls very neatly in the description of what you're banning. So are you saying that when this individual walks down the street, the police are going to be there to either arrest that individual or to remove all the children? Well, somebody would have to make a complaint first, Bill. Well, would yeah, they? It doesn't say anything here about a complaint at all. 
no complaints yeah. are in the ordinance. Yeah, and, and again, that's that's the problem. I feel it was it was vague. Um, it, it describes lewd uh, behavior. So again, you, I might feel that that's lewd behavior, and you may not. And then, or another citizen will, and then make a complaint. Uh, I do feel again. I feel it was, it was very vague, and I think it needed to be addressed a little bit better in this ordinance. That's why I had issues with it. So is the ordinance, it's done, completed, no more discussion about it or follow-up, Steve, or is there needed follow-up still? No, sir. There's no more, um, there's no more follow-up. It is a, it's a, as a right now, it's a done deal unless it's challenged in court. Unless they uh, revoke it uh, to do it. So. All right. Very good. Uh, Steve, I appreciate your appearance here today and uh, answering some of those questions. Much appreciated. Sure. Have a no great problem. day, sir. Hey, thank you all.